Oh, he's preaching. David says somewhere in the Psalms, I will put no unclean things before my eyes. I won't look at anything unclean. And he hadn't even realized that we believers would be the temple of the living God. Isn't it funny about people who are on a health kick? How careful they are about anything they take in. But spiritually, we take in almost every crazy thing. We watch things, look at things, talk about things, gossip, say mean things about people. That's all affecting our body, which is the temple of the Holy Spirit. I dread when I think that the Holy Spirit has heard everything I've said in my life. Went everywhere I went. You're the temple of the Holy Spirit, and you got anger welling up in you and me. That's why Paul says in Philippians chapter 4, that therefore everything that's pure and holy and good report and lovely, and, and true. Think on those things. Why? How can I have the Holy Spirit living with my mind fighting against what he wants to do? He, Satan tries to use our eye gate and our ear gate to get in and contaminate the temple. Watch over your heart with all diligence for out of it comes the issues of life. Do you ever just stop every day, sit in a chair and be quiet with an open Bible and say, God, show me my heart. I want my heart to be pure. Why? You're living in me. You're living in me. A lot of people talk about the presence of God in a service. That's all great. But how about every day the Spirit of God that lives in you? The Word of God on several occasions tells us that we should separate ourselves from the world. It tells us that we should be unlike the world in any way. That we should in fact Come out of it. What agreement can exist between the temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. And God has said, I will dwell with them and walk among them. I will be their God and they will be my people. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Touch no unclean thing and I will receive you. And also, while talking about Babylon, the great whore, the word of God says, And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not her plagues. God wants us to separate ourselves from that evil system that is in contrast to him, and that is full of sin, and that is in fact the mother of all sin, and uncleanliness. The Lord calls us to distance ourselves from that wicked system and its sinfulness, refusing any fellowship with it. Jesus does not want her bride to commit spiritual adultery. So to come out of her, according to this source right here, is to withdraw from her activities, to refuse her luxuries, and to condemn her sinful plans. But then how can you separate yourself from the wickedness that is in the world if you still have agents from that system that hates God, that delights in sin within your proximity? See, some of these things you cannot fight. Some of these things you do not have the willpower at times to overcome them. And if so, then why don't you just rid yourself of those agents completely? Many justify listening to secular music with all its garbage, with all its ungodly lyrics, because they, and I quote, enjoy the beat. Brother, no. Unbeknownst to you, you will unconsciously be affected negatively by that music. So just cut it off. Don't place yourself in the line of fire. You might get shot. I mean, why risk? Why not retreat to a safe place? In fact, you'd be better off in your walk with God without it. So just ditch it. Remove it completely. I read a quote that says, In whatever manner or place it might be, if there's an opportunity for sin to manifest itself in your life, do not allow it to linger. Romans thirteen fourteen says, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Simply put, make no provisions for sin. Go meditate on that.